Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's video. Welcome to the end of 2023. I'm recording this video uh, at the end of November of 2023, and it's the season where we start reflecting on the year past. We think about gift giving season and all that good stuff. So this video will potentially help you accomplish both of those things, reflecting on the past year and thinking about gift giving either for yourself or someone in your life. So what I'm gonna talk about in today's video is creating photo books in Lightroom Classic and some of the tips I've learned in doing that. So I'm gonna leave time codes down below so you can jump to the section that's most interesting to you. So what I'm gonna do in this video in basic form is three things. First, we're gonna start with some of the things uh, you should do as you organize your photos to help it make it easier when you're creating the book. Uh, second thing we'll do is go through the process of actually creating the book, a bunch of tips about that. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about making the book because uh, everybody will do that a little bit differently, but I'll cover some of the basics. And then the third part of the video will be about how to think about the things you need to do after you've sent the book to Blurb and just some little tips and things there as well. So that's the basics and here's a little bit of history for me. So what I've done since 2019 is each of these years, I've created a photo book of that year. So some of my favorite photos from each year. So this is 2022, last year, and it's got a whole bunch of photos in here and all of this is laid out in Lightroom Classic. It then gets sent to a company called Blurb, which is an on-demand printing company. Uh, they have presses, I believe, throughout at least the US. Uh, so there's different locations, so you can speed up shipping. I'll talk more about that later. Obviously, when you're talking about anything like this, there's lots of different ways to do things. So this is my preferred way, some of the tips and things I've learned. If you have suggestions, experiences that you found helpful in creating photo books in Lightroom Classic, uh, please leave those down below. Speaking of Lightroom Classic, uh, this book module, the ability to create books right inside a Lightroom, is one of the reasons I choose Lightroom Classic over Lightroom CC. You can't do this in Lightroom CC. So if you need a reason to go to Lightroom Classic, now you have another one. So before we hop into Lightroom, I'm gonna suggest you do a couple things if you haven't done them already. Uh, thing number one I'm gonna suggest is to have names for all of your photos. Uh, you can do that in the operating system before you import them to Lightroom, or you can do that when you import them to Lightroom, or there's ways to do that even after you import into Lightroom using Lightroom as the manager of that process. If you're not sure how to do that, um, let me know and I can tell you. But I'm trying to keep this video a little bit short. Uh, the second thing I suggest you do uh, inside a Lightroom now would be to do some sort of rating process for your photos to find your favorites, your selects. I use the five star system. I just give the photos I like five stars, uh, the ones I think are worthy of seeing the light of day uh, somewhere on social media or maybe in this book. So um, that's my second tip is to somehow rate and sort your photos. The third tip I have before you get into the book module in Lightroom Classic is to create a, an account at blurb.com. It's free. Uh, you're going to need that when you order the book for yourself or whatever you want to do. You can even sell the book to other people if you want. So uh, that's uh, a, a third thing I suggest before we head into the book module in Lightroom Classic. So now I'm gonna hop into Lightroom and do some structural stuff before we get into the book module, then we'll get into the book module. Welcome to Lightroom Classic, here we are. So uh, what we're gonna do first is do some organizational things so we're ready to make the book. The first thing we're gonna do is create a collection set that's gonna hold all the bits and pieces, at least the way I do it, for this photo book of uh, in Lightroom Classic. So to do that in Lightroom, you're gonna go over to the collections panel, which is on the left-hand side, and then click the plus sign at the top of the collections panel. Click on that, and what we wanna do is create a collection set. A, collections in Lightroom are basically albums, and a collection set is an album of albums. So it's al collections inside of a collection. So I'm gonna create a collection set. 
So as I create my name for my photo book, I'm going to add a tilde in front of the file name that I'll add it to the top of the collection list. And I'm just going to throw my initials and photo book 2023. Feel free to call it whatever title makes most sense for you. All right, so I have my photo book over here. And as you can see, I've actually already done this and we'll come back and revisit this. I've already created my photo book for 2023. It's already been ordered last week. I had hoped it would be here by now, but it isn't. I'm assuming because uh, they had a big sale and it's the holiday season here in the US. So uh, what I'm gonna do next inside my collection set is now I'm gonna create a smart collection. And a smart collection is just like it sounds. It's a collection that has some intelligence to it where you can define what's included and an important thing is what's excluded. So we're gonna start with a smart collection inside that collection set we just made. Mine is called MWS Photo Book 2023. So here we go. So I'm gonna right click on that collection set and inside of that, I'm gonna choose the option to create smart collection smart collection click on that and my smart collection what i want to do is i'm going to call this uh mws my initials again 2023 i'm gonna call this all so this will be all my photos from 2023 so you'll notice we can match different rules here different things we specify to have the photos included so what i'm going to do is choose uh, a date. We have all these different options of what we can include as our top level. So what I want to do is date and I want capture date and then I want the capture date is after and then I'm going to enter a date here which will be 2023 dash well actually I want to start with because this is after I have to go to December 31 2022 so this will be after 2022 1231 and then I'm gonna plus capture date and I'm gonna do date capture date is before 2024-0101 so this will be basically everything created from January 1 2023 through December 31 2023 so I'm gonna go ahead and click create on this just to show you where we're gonna start so I'm going to click on that and I have 19,328 photos. I did a lot of photos this year. It's kind of cool. Uh, I think this not quite a record, but it's, it's a, it was a very productive year. So that's too many. Yeah, that's way too many. So I need to pare this down because I know there's some photos in here that I don't want to include in the book. There's some of my uh, paid projects that I don't want to include. Uh, there's some photos where Debbie assisted my wife uh, that I don't want to include because they're not my photos. And there's a, a couple other events and things I want to exclude from this list. Uh, this is where naming your photos is really, really helpful or knowing maybe a location you want to exclude or other things that you want to exclude from this list. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do, I almost forgot this part, is I'm going to just select my rated photos. In my case, that's the photos that have five stars. So that thing we did at the beginning where I suggested you name your photos and do some kind of sorting process, whether it's a star rating or flag with pics or color labels, any of those ways you can label photos in Lightroom, classic, uh, then you would use that here. All right, so let's jump back into this and work on fine tuning that collection to a smaller, more manageable bit. So I'm still inside my photo book collection set and I have my all photos here. So what I'm gonna do next is start by duplicating that all collection set, smart collection, excuse me. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and I can choose the option to duplicate smart collection. So that's my first step. And what I'm gonna do first is rename this. So right click again and then choose rename. And then I'm just gonna do uh, my, I'm just gonna change it to selects for the name. I'm gonna rename that. It still has the same 19,000 photos plus. So what I need to do is start fine tuning it. 
So this is my process. Uh, your, your process would be different depending on what you want to exclude or include or how you've rated your photos, but I'll show you mine in general and then you can obviously uh, apply it to yours. So to get to back to the smart part of this, you click twice on the name of the smart collection and it brings you into the matching box. So the capture date I want to keep and I want to add another criteria and I do that by clicking on the plus over here. And what I want to do now is start uh, including just my picked photos. That'll be my first thing. So I want to go to my rating, which is what the default is, is greater than or equal to, and I'm going to do five stars. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and save this real quick so you can just see how quickly uh, this will get your list to even smaller. So I'm going to click save and now I'm down to 3,809 photos in this smart collection. Click it twice again and now I'm going to start removing some of the uh, things I don't want to include based on file names. So to do that I'm going to click the plus sign and here I'm going to go file name type, file name, and then I want to change this from uh, doesn't contain, and in this case, I'm going to do DLS, which are Debbie's initials. Uh, when um, I add her photo photos to a project, I add her initials to it so I can do stuff like this. So I'm going to just keep clicking plus to exclude more things. I'm going to go here again. Uh, we'll go file name, file name, and then doesn't contain. I have some headshot photos in here from client work, so I don't want those. Um, I'll just do headshot because I don't remember if I included the S in all of them. Uh, we're going to go plus here. We're going to go file name again. So you get the idea. Hopefully um, there's a client of mine named Carrie Schmidt and I don't want any of her photos in here. They were great photos. I had a lot of fun, but I don't want to include them in my personal photo book. And then I'm going to do the plus again. There's one more project I did with Carrie that has a little bit different name and doesn't have her name. So I'm going to do that. And we want to do doesn't contain, and we're going to do call this prom because it was a, an adult prom event, which was kind of fun. All right, now I'm going to click save again, and now I'm down to 2,124 photos. It's still a lot of photos, but it's more manageable. So there's a bit of setup in getting ready before you even go into the book module, and now I feel like I'm ready to go into the book module. Now, here's the funny thing. You can't make a book from a smart collection. So what I need to do is now that I've got the smart collection with my 2,124 photos, I need to select all those and put them in uh, just a regular old collection inside this collection set. And that's where I'll start making the book. I know there's a lot of collections and sets and nesting things. So pause the video and rewind as you need. All right, so I'm going to select all these photos. So I'm going to do Command or Control A to do that. And then I'm going to do a right click here and I'm going to create just a regular collection this time. And this is going to be called uh, uh, MWS 2023 All for Book. <laughs> Choose your name as you wish. Make sure you have Include Selected Photos selected. Uh, these other ones are optional. I just usually only choose include selected photos for this step. I'm going to go ahead and click create now. And now I have my photos uh, collection, which is ready to have uh, a book created from this group of photos. Okay. I know there's a little bit of work up front. As you can see, it goes pretty quickly, especially if you do it one or two times. Um, but that groundwork will save you so much time and frustration in creating the actual photo book. All right, let's create the photo book. So I have my collection selected and my next step is to go up to the book module in Lightroom Classic and click that once. So just click it. And here's what Lightroom is going to do. It's going to think for a minute and then it is going to build a book and it's going to build just a basic book, at least mine that did this time. Oftentimes when I do this, it's going to create this huge long book with every photo selected. This time it didn't. I'm not sure what I did differently this time. 
But if you did have this really large book that looks like a funky layout, maybe it's only got one photo per spread. So if that does happen that you have a very large number of pages in the book and you just want to get started with a minimal book, uh, what you would do is come up here into the auto layout section and click clear layout. And that will get you to the minimum book. So some of the decisions you start with are up here at the top right in the Lightroom book, in the book settings. And that includes... Uh, the kind of book you're making, uh, in this case, I'm making a photo book. There are several other kinds. You can include just making a PDF, um, but I'm doing a photo book. You have the size, the cover, paper type, and the logo page. So I'm going to review each one of these uh, selections individually for you, and we'll walk through these. So starting with the size. So starting with the size, there are three basic sizes of books for Blurb. Uh, there is this size, which is what I choose, which is a 10 inch wide by eight inch. So it's their standard landscape size. There's this size, which is a seven by seven square. They also have a 12 by 12 square. And then they have a larger size. I call it coffee table. They call it large landscape, which is uh, 13 wide by 10 tall or 11 tall. So those are the basic sizes. Uh, so we'll come back into Lightroom and talk some more about this. So once you have your size chosen, you'll notice as you're making changes, you will get an estimated price here. It will show this information of what the book will cost. I'm gonna pause here for a minute to talk about that. So one of the things I suggest you do is wait for a coupon. Blurb has coupons pretty regularly. Uh, the reason I did my book last week, because they had a 50% off coupon. So uh, that's a good thing. Um, they list the coupon at the top of the homepage. You can also search for one, uh, subscribe to their mailing list, and you'll get one in your mailbox, your email box. So my suggestion is unless it's time sensitive, wait for a coupon. They're usually at least 10 to 15% off. Uh, sometimes around, again, the holidays here in the U.S., they're uh, up to 50% off, which is quite a savings. So uh, back to our program here, let's talk about the different other options. So the other options for the book are uh, what kind of cover do you want on your book? So there's this kind of cover, which is a hard cover. It's a nice thick piece of cardboard. Uh, the, the other kind of option is a soft cover, which is a cover that's soft. It's a, a cover stock sheet of paper that's thinner, uh, but uh, as you might imagine, that is less expensive. Um, and then as far as how we do the cover, how the image appears on the cover, if you do a hard cover, there's two options. So this is called an image wrap. Uh, let me do the smaller one so you can see it better, sorry. Here, let's do this. So this is called an image wrap. And what this is, is uh, it's printed on a sheet of paper that's then glued to the cardboard cover and then has a slip sheet over that, which is glued to that. So this hardcover image wrap. The other option is uh, called a hardcover dust jacket. So that is uh, also printed on paper, but it's not glued to the cover. It's just folded around the cover. So it's also sometimes called a slip case because they slip off. So that's usually what you find in your bookstore hardcover books. They have the slip cover on them. All right, back to our choices. We have different paper types. We have the standard, uh, premium matte, premium luster, proline uncoated, proline pearl, and then we also have a lay flat book, which doesn't, which has a different uh, spine layout so that when you open the book, it's uh, not like this. See, this doesn't lay flat. It would lay flat. Those do cost more. So choose your different options um, and you'll see the price change reflected. Now, uh, just a note about pricing again, this $41, that means it's not for a, <laughs> this two page book. Uh, the minimum book page size, I believe, is 24 pages. So that would be for a 24-page book. You can obviously add lots of pages, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and you'll see the price increase as you add pages. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to do my paper type I choose is premium matte, which raises the price to $46 um, for a 24-page book. 
Next thing I want to talk about is this logo page. Uh, you can turn you can turn that on or off. The logo page is a way to save. I believe it's about fifteen percent. Let's turn it off and see if we go to none. It takes you down. It takes you up to fifty six dollars and twenty five cents, and that was from forty six dollars. So that's about twenty percent. Um, so here's what the logo page is. On my personal books, I leave it on because uh, I don't mind saving a little bit of money. So what it does is on the last page, it prints in very small, light gray text and a logo that says Blurb, design using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. So that's what you get if you leave the logo page on. Oops, that's not focusing. There we go, probably too close. Okay, so that's what you get if you leave the logo page on. For my personal books, I leave it on. Uh, you, you can make the choice either way. All right, so uh, that's kind of the organizational stuff. Uh, we're gonna get started with creating the layout, but before we do anything else, there's something very important I need to tell you. This is the one place in Lightroom Classic where you have to save things. Uh, normally, when you're editing your photos, you can go to the next one, you don't have to save. When you quit Lightroom, you don't have to save. This is the one place you have to save before you do anything else or switch to a different module. So up here in the top right to the left of book settings, there's an, uh, the box that says create saved book, a button. So click on that. You get to name your book again. So this is going to be called, what am I calling this? MWS uh, book 2023. Okay. And it's going to be inside my collection uh, of my collection set MWS all four books. So I'm going to go ahead and click create on that. And you'll notice now this has a new icon. This is a new kind of icon. It looks like a book. So that's kind of handy. But here's my book. This is my book. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. So my process for laying out the book is I start with the cover and work my way from there. Obviously, there's no one way to do this or right way or wrong way. It's however fits your the way you prefer to work. So what I usually do is find a, a photo that represents my year, my thought for the year, my favorite photo from the year, kind of a symbol of the year, and I put that on the front and or back cover. So once I find that photo, I'm just going to use one of the ones that's showing because you'll notice something and it's a little tricky in Lightroom. That's This is one of the tips, I hope, that's helpful to you. So if I click and drag now, because it's a drag and drop interface, to take, I want to put photo number 15 on the cover, let's say. But you'll notice it's dragging a stack of photos. And the reason for that is, when I created the collection for this, I had all photos selected. So all these photos, all 2,000 photos, are selected currently. And you might think, oh, cool, just go deselect them. You'll notice if you go up to book, I mean, go to edit, select none, doesn't do anything. The book module doesn't let you deselect a, or select all. So you have to jump out of book. You can either go to develop or library and now go to uh, edit, select none, command or control D. And now you only have, uh, you'll have no photo selected so you can pick the one you do want. I know it's a little bit of a workaround and it's a little cumbersome, but that's why you're here to learn all these little tips so you don't get frustrated. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to start with my cover. Um, the different layout options, the different view options you have are down here in the bottom left below the main window. Uh, we have the grid view and then we have a two page spread view and then you have a single page spread. So I'm going to go to the two page because I like to see the pages side by side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go find the photo I want to use for the cover. And uh, I know which one I want to use because I've already used it once. So it's over this way a little bit. All right, so once I've found the photo I want to use for my cover, it's, it's really simple to add it. I'm just going to click, hold, drag it onto the cover. And you'll notice that photo might look familiar. If you've been around the channel a little bit, you'll notice that's the same photo as I'm using on my new zine also printed through Blurb. So yeah. So uh, the reason I chose this photo is uh, I did a lot of street photography this year. That's kind of become uh, the focus of what I'm doing. Uh, this is one of my favorite street photos. That's why I use it on the cover of the zine. 
You can get a digital version too. Uh, I'll leave the links down below. Uh, so that's why I'm using that. So uh, that's my cover photo. Uh, my back cover photo uh, I'm going to use is uh, a photo of a bunch of lenses because, uh, again, this year one of the things I did uh, on, on YouTube and in my photography was try a bunch of different lenses. So that's going to be the back cover photo. So I'm going to go find that, drop it in, and then we'll add some text to the cover. So I've got the photo, drag and drop. So what this is doing, uh, an important note here, is the cover I want to bleed. I want it to go all the way to the edges of the page. So that's why it's filling this up. Uh, here in the middle of this cover is a white area, and that's the spine of the book. So that's going to be this part. Uh, so when it's on your bookshelf, if you leave it this way, that's the part you see. So what I've been doing is just putting the year on there and I've been filling it with a color from usually from the front cover. So uh, let's walk through that process. It's really pretty simple. So to do this, I'm going to click here on the cover. And what I'm going to do first is change the background color. And to do that, I'm going to scroll in the books uh, panel to the background section. And I'm going to click on background color to turn that on. And I'm going to click this white box over here to the right, click it once, and it brings up a color chooser, color picker. Also, there's an eyedropper. So if I click and hold the eyedropper and then move it to the photo, I can select a color from the photo that I want to use on the spine. So I'm going to use this kind of gold yellow uh, for the cover. I usually don't use yellow in most of my designs, but this is a pretty prominent color on the, on the cover. So I'm going to use that as my background color, and now the spine will be yellow. So the next step is to put place the text on the spine. I keep it simple and just put the year. Uh, so you just click inside. There's a text box here, like in, in Word or any page layout program. This is a text box. And then you just type what you want. So I'm going to type 2023. Uh, so you can see that is typing there. It's kind of small. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing. And I'll scroll up so you can see a little bit. Okay, so there it is, 2023. That's not where or the font that I want. So what I'm going to do is select all, Command or Control A, and I'm going to change the, the font, the color, and the positioning. So I can do that all in the type section uh, inside the book module. So we have font chooser here. I'm going to click on that. I'm just going to type my font name, which is Axiforma. Oops, A-X. I'm going to click on that, and then I can choose the type, the, which font I want from that, I'm going to go for bold. Uh, I'm going to change the color from black, which is right here, to white. Close that. Then I'm going to choose uh, the center align. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so you can see that. Center align, that's too much. Let's go back in. There we go. And then, that, so that's horizontally centered. Now I need to vertically center it inside of this um, cell for the text. And that happens right here. And I'm going to click on that. So now it's centered nicely in that. And I'm going to choose a font size. So what I want to do is highlight the, the font size. So I can click on the font size and I'm just going to type 18. And that's, I think, a nice big enough size, chunky enough that I don't run the risk in case the the spine is just a little bit smaller or it wraps a little tighter that uh, it wraps around the spine as well. So uh, leave yourself a little room here if you want or make it really big and creative. I don't know. So now I have my text on the spine. I'm going to zoom back out. Command minus to go back to the original view. I'm just going to click out here so I can see what it looks like. And I forgot to change the color back. I had a goof here so I I edited that out, but obviously I didn't edit this part. So there we go. <laughs> Change my color back to white. Um, I usually don't put any text on the front of the book, uh, but I do include uh, my copyright and web address on the back of the book. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to click on the back of the book. And what I want to do is click down here where it says add photo text. So I'm going to click add photo text. And it says photo text, and I want to change that. 
So I'm going to type uh, the copyright symbol, which on a Mac is uh, option and the letter G. And then 2023, uh, and then my web address, mslaydickphoto.com.com. I can't type when you're watching. Uh, and let's uh, style that the way I like. So it is already Axiforma bold. I don't want bold. I just want to go book for that. I, wanna, I don't need it to yell so much. Um, I'm going to go to a smaller size. Uh, let's see, probably about maybe 10 or even 9, something like that. I don't have to be super precise on this. But I do want to right align this instead of center align. I'm going to go to the right. Um, now, a note. While the layout tools and templates inside of Lightroom Classic are really good, there's not a lot of flexibility and freedom to do really precise placement of elements. And this is an example of that. I can't just drag and move this around, but I do want to move it and there's kind of a workaround to do that. So what I'm going to do to move this around a little bit, you'll see it's right over here, kind of against the edge. So I, I don't want it that close to the spine. I want it over this way a little bit to the left. So what I'm going to do is go find my cell, which is up here, and I'm going to increase the padding of the cell. Is that going to do it? So i got to select the cell and then increase the padding. And what that's doing is it's basically an internal margin in the cell. So I can use this to align this where I want. So I'm going to go right around 30 for the padding. And there you go. Um, there's probably another way to do this, but that, I know that way works for me. and I know how to use it that way, so it's efficient and a little less friction. One thing I also usually do is just drop the opacity the, of that text. Uh, again, I don't need it to yell. I just need it to be present. So instead of 100%, I'll usually go to about 70 or 80%, uh, something like that. So click over here. There we go. So it's still there but it's not real loud. All right, let's lay out some pages in the book. So let's do that next. So uh, you can see before, uh, to, we have a navigator down here. It says I'm on the cover. If I go to the right, it will take me to page number one. Uh, so what I want to do on page number one is a different layout. Uh, so I switched back to the, 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 the spread view. So I'm seeing the left and right page. This page is a solid gray because this page is, is this. So inside the book is the first slip sheet page. And then page one will be your first printed page of your photos. Page one uh, over here in the lighter gray, I can choose from some templates of how my photos are laid out here or photo. So you do that down in the bottom right of this, this gold box that's around the page and there's a little black uh, down pointing triangle. So I'm gonna click on that and we have options for different page uh, photo layouts. We can have one photo, two photos, three, so on and so forth. Multiples. So these are pre-built that you can adjust them after uh, you select them. Uh, I usually keep it really simple uh, and currently what I'm doing is one photo per page and with a border around it. So I do this one. This is my layout that I use. So to add the first photo, I'm gonna go, I usually go chronologically for my photos. So I start back at the beginning of the year, find the first photo I want, which I'm gonna use this leaf, and I'm gonna click, hold, drag it, and it will size it automatically to fit this box best. Let's talk a little bit about now what we can do with this. So this photo is here, and it's sized, and now I can position it left and right. Oops, I just dragged it off, sorry, don't, don't do that. Uh, I can position left and right, but I can't move up and down because this is a, a horizontal photo, so it's constrained by the height already. I do have some room, I can basically crop left and right into this orientation because it's a little different size than the image crop was originally. Um, you can zoom. So I have the image selected. You get this zoom box up here. Uh, so I can, again, do a different crop. Uh, I can then move this around. So if I wanted to center it or keep it to the side or move it one other way. Um, so you can do the zoom or however you'd like uh, to make this fit. 
So by default, it will zoom to fit, uh, which in my case here in this photo is about 10%, uh, I believe, 11%. Uh, so there you go. It's just that simple. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna go back to my all view. So this is uh, the grid view. And as you can see, uh, this is my book. There's nothing to it right now. So what I'm gonna do next is with page one, which is the single photo per page, I'm gonna use that to go ahead and start adding pages. So I'm gonna, you can, there's two ways to add pages. You can add a blank page, or if you click on add page here in the page section, uh, if you click add page, it will use whatever the page you're currently on is, it will add that template, one photo per page with a border in this case, to the next page. So I'm gonna click add page, add page, and just do a whole bunch of them. I'm watching the price, the estimated price, and you'll see once I get, I think it is to 24, oops, no, it was uh, uh, 20. Now it's added uh, 90 cents. And that's good for another two pages. So basically it's about 45 cents a page uh, in this size and paper. So I'm gonna add a whole bunch of pages and then I'm just gonna go through and lay them out. So I'll do a couple more spreads just to show you how I approach things. Uh, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll fast forward to the end uh, where all the book is laid out and then I'll show you the next steps. So what I do is I'm gonna come back in here to this page spread. I'm gonna click on the, the two page view. So I'm just seeing the two pages side by side. And I'm gonna find the next photo I want and I'm not sure what that is. Um, so once I have the next photo, what I'm thinking about is how the two photos that will be seen side by side work together. So I wanna use this bird and I'm gonna put him on the right or her on the right uh, because the bird is facing into the book, into the center. Uh, so I kind of like that. I have this crow here. I might put that one over here. So I have a bird theme here on this, this spread with a crow on the left looking into the bird on the right, also looking at the crow. So that's one way to, I kind of go with these things. Sometimes I'll uh, theme them by color, uh, theme them by subject, theme them by um, just location even. Uh, so we'll go to the next page and do a little bit more. So uh, we have this uh, heron rookery in Marymore Park uh, that I wanna remember that. Uh, I'm gonna add that photo and let's find one more from that just to show everything. So sometimes I'll do a closer view and a wider view. And for this, this got this little bit of up here in the top left. So I might zoom a little bit to get rid of that and just adjust. So by all means, do what you want with your layout. Uh, spend the time to fine tune it. Uh, oftentimes I'm just dragging, dropping, dragging, dropping, get the layout started and then I'll review for some fine tuning. Uh, another thing I wanna point out while, you're while I'm here in the, the thumbnail viewer at the bottom of your screen, you'll notice once I've added a photo, it'll put a little tab here with the number. Mine says one because that means that photo has been used once in the book. So that's a handy visual for seeing which photos you've already used so that, I mean, you can obviously use it multiple times, but if you only wanna use the photo once, this will help you know it's already been used. So let's move into maybe a street photo over there. We'll add that traffic cone. I kind of like that one. And let's see what I want to put on the left for that. Maybe that, something like that. I already know this is a different layout than what I've actually sent off to Blurb. So this is kind of interesting that I'm doing it differently. And that's kind of common. It depends on the mood of your day when you're doing the layout. Uh, so by all means, uh, sleep on it or do it once and publish. Uh, so there's lots of different ways to approach this. So that's kind of a, a rough, quick view of how to do this. Uh, one more note, I guess I'll share on, on different pages. If you want uh, the page templates, some, uh, some of them have text. So if I wanted one photo with some text, I could do that. And there's a text box down here. You can type directly into here. You can change all the uh, fonts and sizes and things like that inside of the text box. My suggestion would be to write the text maybe in a, either your notes app or a text editor and copy and paste it. It might be a little more efficient. Uh, so 
different layouts, different things you can do. Uh, you can a, a, adjust this box. I, I can't really reposition, well, can I reposition it? Yeah, I can reposition it. Um, so I do have precision of some layout and sizing here. So uh, you'll see it's kind of snapping to different points to align with different elements already existing. So um, yeah, you can adjust things and you can save these, like say this is the layout you want. You've got your photo with a, a caption below it or text below it. You can save this layout to reuse in other pages. So uh, I don't wanna get bogged down in the real deep in the details of laying out the books. If you do have questions, uh, please leave a comment uh, down below and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Once you've got your book all laid out, your next step is to send it off to Blurb. So I'm going to jump into my already done book and I'll show you what that looks like and the next steps to consider. So here's my completed book uh, with the different all the different pages and I have a whole bunch of pages. I'm up to 140 pages in this book. Uh, and you can see the price was going to be $80.60. I had the 50% off, so I, I had to pay $40.30 plus tax plus shipping. So quite a big saving. Uh, a couple, one more notes while we're here. Uh, you, you do have the option, and I've used it here. When you do your page uh, layout, you can have a photo span the spread. So this will go across two pages. You can find that by two page spreads here. That's the page layout type. And then there's some templates built in here with different options. All right, so once the book is done, the next step is to send this to Blurb. And uh, the way you do that is uh, down here in the bottom right, there's the option to send this book to Blurb. There's also in the bottom left, an option to export this as a PDF. So if you wanted to print this yourself, uh, on maybe your home uh, printer, you can do that from the PDF. It will make PDFs of all these pages and then you can do what you want. You could even send them to friends and family. So uh, what I'm gonna do is click on send to blurb and just show you that process. Uh, it takes a while to export, so I'm not gonna do all of that, but I'll jump ahead to what it does and some other tips I have for you inside the blurb store before you click buy. So I'm gonna click on send book to blurb. So after I click send book to blurb, it gave me these this error and it says a couple pages have transparency uh, and they will show up as opaque in the book. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, I'm not sure why it's showing up as transparent, but I'm just gonna click okay and let it do its thing. So what it's gonna do first is give you this uh, dialog box where you get to give the book a title that makes sense for you. Uh, I've already, I'll get to why I have a version two of the book. I'm gonna just call this version three. Uh, if you have a subtitle you wanna include and then your author name, and then you click upload book. And what it's gonna do is export all the images uh, and size them for the book and then bundle that all together and then send that off to Blurb. And as you might imagine, it's gonna, it takes a while. Uh, it's generating these uh, images from the raw files in my case. Uh, there's 140 of them. So it's gonna take a few minutes. Here's my progress bar. It's barely moved in the little bit of time I'm talking to you. So I'm gonna let that do its thing and I'll time it so you have a sense of how long this is gonna take. And then uh, when it's all done, I'll let you know that and I'll return to the video. All right, so we're all done. It's uh, exported the book, it's uploaded it to Blurb. For me, that took about 17 minutes uh, from start to finish on that 140-ish page book. So here's where we're at now. Before you order the book, my suggestion is to review the book. And you can't do that directly from here. Uh, you can't click on the book uh, and, and see what it, what's, it's got. Uh, and it's kind of important to do that, uh, especially with an investment of maybe this size. So the way to get there is go to your dashboard. And then now you have a preview of that book. Oh yeah, here's revision. You can still order that too. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, shameless plug. So to do the preview, come to your dashboard, and if you've never ordered from Blur before, it'll be the only thing there. Click on the preview, and then 
uh, you can click on the book and it'll walk you through the individual pages. And I found this is really helpful to do when I did it on the first upload. That's why there's a version two of mine. Uh, the last two pages had a little artifact of a green line across them. So the last page and the back cover. Uh, I'm not sure where that happened in the upload or in the export process. So I exported it again and uploaded that version. Check that. All was good. So go through your whole book. Make sure all looks good and the, no surprises, no glitches in the matrix and all those good things. So uh, once you're ready to go, then go back to your, um, your dashboard and click uh, go back to order book and I have a couple suggestions here for you. So the first one is to the tip I have is to unselect turn off making a PDF. You can do that inside of uh, Lightroom Classic so there's no reason to pay blurb five dollars to do that. The second thing I would suggest uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click add to cart and I'll walk you through this. I'm gonna click checkout uh, just to see what we do next. So for my suggestion would be to choose the economy shipping option. Um, my experience uh, in Seattle area where I live, when they ship it, I get it within two days. So I'm assuming there's a, a printing plant nearby. Uh, so I get it pretty quickly. So unless I have a, a rush client job or there's some reason I need it rushed, I would suggest standard shipping. Your mileage will vary depending on where you live in the country and the locate the nearness of one of their print production facilities. So uh, that's the suggestion. My final suggestion and tip for creating blur books. Hello again, uh, future Michael here with uh, two quick updates. First, uh, while I was editing the this video, uh, my book came, my 2023 book has arrived. Uh, so the update on that is it took about a week. I ordered it on November 23rd, it arrived on November 30. Uh, there was Thanksgiving holiday here in the US, so you can kind of judge how long it takes to get a book printed based on that. Uh, so pretty impressive, the book looks great. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I've just done a quick look through it. Uh, as you can see, I'm about to head to work, Kenmore Camera Staff, uh, for our holiday sale. Speaking of sales and coupons, uh, another update for you. I just uh, got an email from Blurb that uh, when one coupon ends, another begins. So they have a 30% off coupon right now, plus free shipping through December 11th, I believe it is, 2023. So if you're watching this in future future, uh, this is for 2023. Anyway, that's the update. I will now return you to our regularly scheduled video conclusion. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you want to make a photo book. They're awesome. There's something really special about printing a book, about making your photos permanent, uh, sharing that with other people, or for yourself to have a memory of, of your progress in your year in photos or however long of time you're looking at. Uh, I've also done this for uh, specific trips, like I have one from our Utah trip we did. Uh, I have one from uh, our London trip that I showed you. So lots of different reasons to make photo books. And if you're giving your photos as a gift, one of the great things about photo books, I often joke about like when you give people prints, like, hey, I want to give you this photo. Uh, you give them a print. The only way they can see that really is you have to ask them to put a hole in their wall. So they need a nail or a screw so they can put the photo on the wall. Books, they go on shelves and tables and things. So no holes required in the people you gift them to. Also, I think they're a great value, especially for family members. They're a great uh, keepsake, a great memory for uh, and a connection point for you with the art you make or the moments you've shared together. So enough of that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any experience and tips you want to share around making photo books or printing your photos, uh, please leave that in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, I'll do some Lightroom stuff going forward as well. Uh, in addition to my street photography videos, please click the subscribe button and join the party. So um, I hope your year end is going well. I hope the holiday season is treating you well. It's not too hectic. Uh, we have a big sale coming up this weekend at Kenmore Camera, so I know we'll be busy and I'll know I'll survive and have with sore feet, but it'll be a good time. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So until we meet then, I hope you stay safe, 
stay well, and have fun creating photos. Bye for now.